nothing, except we're in an old dead wood at night. There's no one around for a hundred miles. No radio or cell phone coverage, no lights, and no one to rescue you if something comes. If the wood is dead, said Kitty, what's going to come? Carl laughed and flicked on his torch. Okay, you've got me there. That's the problem with you medical types, always so rational. Kitty breathed in the cool night air. Wind rustled through the skeletal trees. X medical type, said Katie, and I wouldn't be so sure. Something is ruining our experiments. Carl ran his torch beam over a small plastic pool sticking out of the uneven ground. Here we are, he said. Geo sensor four one two. Brother and sister knelt at the stubby object. Katie extracted a small toolkit from her coat pocket. She fiddled at the dead sensor's side. I checked this two hours ago. Now the sensor's totally offline. It doesn't make sense. Carl nodded. Of course not. That's why. Why what? Why? It's so scary. <laughs> Katie slapped his arm. Carl, stop it. Although she would never tell him, Katie admitted to herself that yes, actually, she was scared. She didn't like the silence, the dark, the emptiness. Both she and Carl had come to the project from a lifetime in warm, loud cities. No one had lived in this country for 50 years.